Well, I was going to ask you, I propose that, um, which of the alternative fuels excites you the most? Which do you think have the potential to scale? Biofuels, wind, solar, efficiency? Well, I think from our perspective, it's long term, it's solar. And I think that's, that's going to become an increasing part of the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem, as Dr. Schur mentioned, is how do you get the cost down? Because it's, it's, it's too expensive today to be competitive unless you put the, the government's put incentives in place like they have in Germany and in Spain and some other countries to encourage it. Uh, today, though, if you look at the competitive technologies, uh, biomass is, is very competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, wind is very competitive. Um, we've been expanding pretty dramatically in the wind business. Um, you still need some government incentives in place to encourage it, but um, it's quite attractive. As a matter of fact, when I was in China two weeks ago, we signed up our first China wind deal. We're starting construction in a couple of months, and that's building a, a wind farm, 50 megawatt wind farm, about 200 miles southeast of Beijing, uh, which will expand to about 250 megawatts. Will you build the turbines yourself? No, we'll import those turbines, most likely. We'll also look at, the, they've got some good turbine manufacturers in China. Mm -hmm. um, Where are the best in the world? The, um, the best is Goldwind right now, the number one, I think, producer in China. Yeah, yeah. Um, Where is it made? It's made in uh, Xinjiang province, yeah, okay. actually, wow. or Muchi. I met with the, uh, the head of Goldwind while I was out there, a very forward-thinking individual. Uh, he's got the same, same approach, I think, as you have, which is, uh, let's, let's figure out how we can manufacture this, how can we drive the cost down so that these things are competitive. But what, what really interested me was this company, Goldwind, is, is now thinking much more about how do we develop the new technologies. So they've set up an R&D operation in Germany, hmm. using German engineers to Chinese develop company. the new yes. Chinese company with R&D now located in Germany to develop those new gearless technologies so they can have leading edge technology. To me, that was a big shift in terms of thinking. Usually. I used to think of Chinese companies as take, take Western technology, drive the cost down, and outcompete us on cost. That's shifting now. I think that's a big change. We're now, I think, there's a, a lot of very good engineers being trained in China. The technology can be developed there. So I think we're going to see a shift over the next decade to where technology will be developed there and manufactured there. Um, I have a question to both of you. When you talk about these new technologies, what's going on in the energy business, anybody ever mention the United States? Um, uh, I hear uh, Germany and China, Japan, Denmark, Spain, you know, wind, uh, um, solar. Um, what, 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 what happened to us? Um, how, did, how did we fall so behind the cutting edge? Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe just to frame that, you know, I did a magazine piece a couple weeks ago for the New York Times, and one of the most telling quotes, you know, for me, Dr. Xi, in doing this was, I interviewed Jeffrey Emilt, uh, the head of General Electric, and he told a remarkable story. He said that he's worked for GE for 25 years. And in those 25 years, he said he'd seen seven generations of new innovation in healthcare. New CAT scans, new MRIs, X-rays. In power, one. In the same 25 years, GE's selling basically the same coal-fired power plant. The truth is the last energy innovation in America was 1955, nuclear power. The last really breakthrough innovation. How did that happen? How did we fall so behind the innovation curve? Doesn't that suggest, Paul, that something is wrong with the price or the regulations? Well, I think it's, I mean, places like Germany and Spain have made dedicated efforts on the part of their governments to say, we want to encourage solar, for example, or wind. And which, you know, you look at, if you look at the uh, sort of solar maps to tell you where you should put solar plants, it's not in Germany. Yeah, Germany. How could Germany be a solar country? They don't, but, have, they don't have sun there. But I think it was really the government saying, we want, to, we want to see the technology developed here. So I think you've got a little bit of government intervention to try to set up a niche where you can be competitive. Um, I think in the power sector, uh, we've probably seen some of the environmental controls here in the United States. But in terms of the, the technology, you've actually seen a fair amount of uh, improvements in technology coming from companies like GE in terms of gas turbines, but it's, it's evolutionary. It's not breakthrough right. technology. Yeah. Um, I think the other, uh, the other thing that's shifting is in terms of just the training of engineers. We're not – it was interesting. I was at Caltech to meet with Nate Lewis. Mm -hmm. I think you know him. And we were talking about solar and, and the, the sort of leading edge work they're doing in the solar world. Um, we walked by a building, and the building 
was uh, originally, when Caltech was set up, that was the electrical engineering was for power engineering, transmission engineering. Today, they don't even think about that. That's not of interest because the science isn't moving that fast. And they're all shifted into the micro nanotechnology. So we're seeing, I think, in the United States, we're picking up other areas that we're getting involved in, but it's not in the power sector for sure. That's yeah. not the big and exciting area. Places like India and China are turning up power engineers uh, by the thousands. Uh, matter of fact, I think companies like us are having a hard time finding good, capable engineers because they're in such high demand. As everybody's thinking about building more power plants, building more refineries, um, building nuclear plants, can't find the engineers to do it today. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I Please. find actually, you know, in the United States actually, you know, in, in solar, especially in technology development, you know, the amount of uh, budget being allocated to this sector, I think is probably the highest or one of the highest in the world. You know, since Jim Carter's time, yes. I think in many things, so has been always, you know, uh, uh, leading, you know, uh, position right. in this industry. So what I found actually is diff different, you know, also when I personally involved in the business, because I, before I was a scholar, I never thought about, you know, the relationship sure. between technology and the market. But after, you know, personally being heavily involved in the business sector, I realized actually more importantly is market. So if U.S. government, you know, like a uh, German or a Spanish government, they actually you put right. in money right. to stimulate this market, yes. then people will worry about technology innovation themselves because they need to compete. Right. They need to compete. They, they need to you know, uh, re reduce right. their cost. They will figure a way yes. how to do it better. So that's, you know, see, I mean, most importantly is market. When you say market, it means get your prices or your regulatory standards yes. right. And exactly. so you really stimulate the market to yes. reach them and then, then move them up. Yes. Let's go to a few questions uh, while we have. Um, right there. Yeah. I would just have his people to stand up. Oh, that's okay. Well, yeah, we'll, I like to hear people's voice. He's got it all together. Great. Go ahead. Could you identify yourself? Well, I think if, if you say it's got to compete directly with fossil fuel power plants uh, without any subsidies, it'd be, uh, I'm thinking it's less than a dollar. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think maybe 50 cents, it's quite competitive, 50 to 40 cents. So you're talking about a cost reduction factor of 10. But, but I think, as Dr. Shu mentioned, with thin film technology, I think you're starting to see the beginnings of numbers that are coming down um, closer to the range of you know, maybe 13 or uh, what was it, a dollar 30 a watt from four dollars to say a dollar 30, dollar 20. So I think it's it's already happening. It's almost getting to the point where that's commercially viable. Um, when I was in China, I met with a thin film manufacturer that claimed they could actually beat that price, the the dollar, and get down below it. I think we've got to do some checking to understand that. Um, I, I think you probably tell me I should look very closely at that before I invest in that company, but. But I do think you're beginning to see that happen, and it's, it's, it's driven by a couple things. One is the, the prices are high because of the price of high gas, the price of oil, um, the concerns about the environment. So I think you're just seeing much more effort going into the solar area. Uh, but I think you get it down below a dollar, it's going to be competitive. I think you'll see uh, with renewable standards, you'll see more and more people willing to pay a little bit more to get something like solar. Um, you're seeing a little bit of that in California, but the price to make it broad-based it's going to probably have to come down to less than a dollar. Less than a dollar per kilowatt hour. Uh, well, less than a dollar per watt what? of installed capacity. Gotcha. Installed. So he could produce it today for I don't know what you're. Sure. Yeah, talk a little bit about uh, 